What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Got a very special vlog. Not only are we in Maryland live, but if you know a thing or two about Call of Duty videos, got the goat right here. <laughs> What's going What's on, going K3? on, man? I can't wait to take your money today, oh, you know? Oh man, talking that whoop already. <laughs> We're gonna hop into the 1-3 games. Uh, if you know a thing or two, this is a Call of Duty legend. Uh, we'll throw his little YouTube channel up on the screen. Give him a, give him a little shout out, you know? If you wanna see some good Call of Duty content, Search this place them. is the way to go, but I don't think he needs help with getting more viewers. So, um, Korean he's, Savage. He's getting to Korean the poker Savage game. Savage and Rampage Poker. Do we see any poker vlogs from you in the future? <laughs> any chance? Yes. All right. 100%. All right. Let's do K3 poker vlogs. Um, we're going to play some 1 3. You're going to be super casual. We'll see how it goes. Um, try to run it up and uh, have a good time. I know all of you guys are asking for like sl smaller stakes, and I think you guys are a little spoiled from that 50 100 session last video. So, here at Maryland Live, going to hop into the 1 3 action. Try to run it up. Let's get into it. We're here at the 1-3 at Maryland Live, and one of the very first hands in, we pick up Ace-8 of Spades on the button. There are two players in early position who limp, and you know the saying, simps limp, we're not going to stand for that. In position, I raise it up to $20, and we only get the big blind to call. All the limpers actually end up folding. Going to a flop of Ace-8-4, two hearts, so with top two pair, pretty good flop to see. He checks to me and definitely going to put in a continuation bet, so I just bet out $20. He decides that $20 is not enough, and check raises to $65. Music to our ears, especially when he doesn't have too much behind, maybe like $100 behind a $65 raise. So it's an easy decision to announce all in, and he actually snap calls, so we're off to a run out with top two pair. Got to assume we're ahead a lot of the time. We're off to a run out, which fills us up for a full house. And I think we're going to take this one down. We show our full house, and he actually ends up showing an ace. So, nice to take it down. Following that hand, we pick up ace-queen of clubs under the gun, and we're actually in the $6 straddle. Plus two player limps. The middle position player, our buddy K3, ends up putting in a raise to $20. Action folds to me, and let's battle it out against our boy. We put in at three bets. We're out of position, so I size up to $80. The limper gets out of the way, wants none of this business. And our buddy Michael ends up calling, so let's try to battle it out. Off to a flop, which comes ace, jack, three, two diamonds. With top pair on this board, I'm gonna size to $60. It's about a third of the size of the pots, and for 60, he makes the call. We're going to a turn, which is the queen of diamonds, so the flush does complete. We do have top two pair though. He's got about $240 left in his stack and I think we can go either way, all three options of checking it, betting small or jamming it all in. And in this situation, I decided to just go for all of it, rip it all in. Surely we could be behind some flushes here, but even up against flushes, we've still got a few outs to suck out on. So I do jam and he ends up making the call saying he can't fold. So when he calls, we show our top two pair and actually ends up showing us queen jack of hearts. So pretty sick turn there for a cooler two pair versus two pair. Going to the river, which does not improve him in the eight of hearts. We stack our buddy and pick up some sweet, sweet K3 chips. With our stack chipping up here, we pick up king seven of clubs in the low jack and there's a straddle. There's one player who limps and I decide to raise it up to $25. We get the cutoff to make the call and that's all. Going heads up out of position, the flop comes king deuce deuce to spades. We've got top pair with a pretty weak kicker. I decided to check this one. He ends up putting out a bet of $40, and I'm just going to slow play. As played, I make the call. Going to a turn, which comes the king of hearts, and, well, voting up, pretty much having the nuts, I just check and play and flow. He throws out another bet of $65. Now, I think sometimes we can check raise here as we pretty much have the nuts, but we're certainly not afraid of anything, and if he has some sort of flush draw or bluff, we can just call and let him barrel on the river and get more money. So I just make the call and slow play once again. When the river comes, the jack of spades. For a third time, as played, I check. Sometimes he can just bluff at the spades getting there, or if he does have a flush, maybe make a very thin value bet with the flush. I check to let him barrel three streets with all of his nothing holdings as well, but unfortunately this goes check check, and I think our kings full of deuces is going to take this one down. We pick up a pretty dicey situation here in the big blind. We pick up jack six offsuit in a five way limped pot. So four players limp, we check our option. And the flop comes jack five six, all diamonds. 
So top two pair on this board, action checks to Michael in early position. He throws out a bet of $20, folds to the cutoff player who limped, and now puts in a raise, but it's a small one to $40. Action folds to me, and pretty weird spot to be in. We've got top two pair, which is nice, but having all diamonds on the flop, we certainly can be beat a lot of the time against flushes. The cutoff player seems pretty tight, and when raising on a monotone board, I think people usually don't raise or bluff with draws. So with top two pair, we certainly can't fold yet. It's a pretty small raise to $40. I just make the call out of position, and surprisingly, Michael ends up folding. So now we're going heads up to a turn. The turn is a 10, doesn't change anything, so I check. She throws out another bet of $65. Pretty suspicious of her sizings here, as it seems like it's for value, and I don't know what kind of hand she can be value betting here. But folding two pair obviously isn't fun. I'm not going to go anywhere. I make the call. The river is now a king, so nothing really changes as no diamond comes on the runout. I check for a third time. She bets out $50 now, and I don't know. I'm not going to be folding for another $50. She could sometimes just value bet worse hands. Sometimes I just snap it off. I announce that I have two pair. And she ends up showing us 9-3 of diamonds for the flopped flush. So just one of those times that we were beat, but certainly not going to be folding to these rather small bets all three streets. Here we get a little card debt in this session. And well, when you're card debt, you got to start playing some suspicious hands like 10 deuce of spades. I raise it up to $20 because why not play this hand and mix it up? We get some action as the button and small blind call my raise. So let's go to a flop. The flop is another monotone one in Jack 10-5, all hearts. The small blind first to act actually donks out $22. Same player as last hand, and here with a pair, definitely not going to go anywhere. I don't think you can ask for too much besides flopping a pair with 10 deuce. I call, and the button folds. Heads up, the turn, now comes the five of diamonds. She actually checks now, and I think this is a good situation to bet in target draws or over cards. So I set the size to $40. I think a lot of the time, Jack X Holdings probably won't be checking this and giving up. So with the action, I think our hand is going to be good here with 10X. And for $40, she ends up making the call. Also, side note, this player obviously plays a ton of hands when she showed 9-3 suited last hand. We're off to a river hoping to not see a heart. It is the 8 of diamonds. So I don't think we can get too much value now. So action ends up going check, check. She says that she missed and... Well, I'm happy to show this lovely holding 10 deuce suited that I raised preflop with. Hand following that with pocket deuces in the big blind. This is a five way limped pot. So we're off to a flop five ways. I check my option and the flop obviously comes seven, three deuce to clubs with bottom set. Loving this spot on a draw heavy board. The small blind actually throws out a bet of $12 and we're in position of him. I'm definitely interested in putting more money in the middle. I decided to just make the call for now and evaluate all the action behind me. Only plus one, our buddy Michael K3 makes the call as well. So we're going three ways to a turn. When the turn comes, the 10 of diamonds doesn't really change a whole lot on this board. The small blind continues for a bet of $30. And I'm just going to continue to slow play for now. I think we can have some traps here. So I make the call. Michael folds. So now we're going heads up to a river. The river is the six of diamonds. Not a card that should change much besides four or five getting there. But when the small blind checks now, all the draws have missed besides four or five. We'd certainly have to assume we're ahead with bottom set and a very disguised one at that. So... Given the situation and all the draws missing, I size to $140 as it certainly can be perceived as a missed draw and we can get some light calls by 10x or 7x. Not too long of a time passes as he makes the call rather quickly. We show our bottom sets and we're going to scoop this one. Pretty large pot here and the 1-3 streets certainly could have been bigger if we raised flop or turn. But regardless, our big bet on the river got us paid. Improving in our pocket bear holdings the next orbit in the big blinds, we pick up pocket tens and we get the cutoff to open it up to $16. A rather large sizing, but when action folds to me, certainly going to raise it up with a premium. I size to $60 and she ends up making the call. And the flop is another great one. It is Jack 10, 7, 2 hearts. We don't have the nuts as 8, 9 makes a straight, but certainly a great flop to see with a strong hand and one that contains a lot of draws. So I start off with a bet on the larger side to $80 as we can get a lot of value from a ton of different hands. And she ends up making the call for 80 and we're off to a turn. 
With the pot building, the turn is the six of clubs. This doesn't change a single thing as eight, nine is still the nuts for the straight. And I'm gonna continue betting here as she has a little bit larger of a stack in front. And I just wanna be able to get it all in on the river. I bet $150 as she has about $400 in stack. If she has a good hand, maybe we can commit her stack here on the turn or just end up getting it all in on the river anyways. She ends up making the call for 150, so we've got 250 left to play for on the river, no matter what it is. When the river is the seven of clubs, one of the bink cards to see as we boat up, we beat all straights and only lose to pocket jacks and pocket sevens. So sticking to the plan of getting it all in now with a great card boating us up, I jam for $250 effective, and now she goes deep into the tank and thinks about it for a while. Looks like she's in some sort of agonizing situation, but reluctantly ends up folding saying that she had a 10 herself. We almost got the maximum against second pair somehow. I uh, wish she had a jack, because if she had top pair, I don't think she was gonna go anywhere. But as played, we'll just scoop this one. For the last interesting hand of this session, pocket eights and plus one, I put in a raise of $12 and we get the big one to call. And another pocket pair, of course, the flop comes 10, 9, 8, 2 clubs, three freaking sets in a row. My goodness. He checks to me, and with bottom set on, once again, another draw-heavy board, I throw out $30, about the size of the pots, and for 30 he surprisingly calls. So let's go to a turn, which is the three of clubs. Once again, he checks to us, and although the club draw did get there, we can't be too afraid as we do have a very strong hand. I just size up to $45, and for $45, surprisingly, it's not enough for him. He check raises to 110. And like I've been saying this video, I think check raises are rarely bluffs here in the low stakes. But with a set here, we certainly can boat up. Sometimes we can be good against two pair. I'm happy to just make the call here and see a river in position. So we put 110 total in, and the river comes the Jack of Hearts. Before the river actually comes, he checks in the dark, and considering we see a terrible river here with a four-liner on board, I'm happy to just check this one back. And to our surprise, we lose this one, but we lose to Queen Jack for the flopped nut straight. Certainly could have lost a lot more in this hand if more money was put on the flop, but... As played, I guess we got away rather cheaply. So wrapping up the vlog here in my hotel room, big shout out to Marilyn Lyon for hooking up a hotel room for me for today and the weekend. Um, the 1-3 went pretty well. I am just exhausted with all the driving and traveling I've been doing so far. But um, yeah, we were in the 1-3. We bought in for 600 chips. We cashed out for 1355. We donked off a little bit, had some fun, and overall uh, ran pretty well besides running the bottom set into a flop straight um but yeah the one three streets always pretty friendly pretty kind and always just a blast so uh big shout out to everyone that i met on this trip so far today at maryland live at the casino and it was really cool to finally bring out this bad boy i made its debut today i just got it um like a few days ago brought it to my maryland trip here and uh, i don't know if there are any more left to be honest at this point when this video airs but if there are click the link down in the description below but these things uh luck box one for one in profitable sessions so far it does bring in the luck but um yeah thanks so much for watching this video if you made it to the end as always really appreciate you guys smashing that like button helps the channel grow a ton and you know the subscribe button is always free but thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one peace